Hi and welcome back to this level 2 of how to use Logic Pro 11 and in these videos we're going to cover using send effects so that'll include reverb and delay, incorporating effects crashes into our production including making our own, we're going to go over equalization or EQ to see if we can make things sound a little bit more polished, then we're going to dive into compression including sidechain compression before doing a bit of a mix down and some final tweaks and then touching on some light mastering as well. Okay, welcome back. So we're gonna go through sidechain compression, which you will have undoubtedly heard of or heard in dance music. It's uh, became a real integral part of uh, sort of dance music. And now it's still used in, in various different degrees. It depends on the genre. And this sort of track, it was definitely used at the time. So it's something that was originally sort of developed as a sidechain technique well before it was picked up by dance music producers. So where you might choose to compress one signal but trigger it from another one. So for a classic example would be you'd have a compressor on a bass track and then when the kick drum was, would hit at the same time as the bass, it would duck the bass. So it just allowed space for the kick drum to come through. You also would hear it on the radio it's that kind of ducking effect where the DJ will speak and then um, in between breaths or sentences you will hear the music sort of come up. So it's that, that sort of thing. And then dance music producers figured out it was because of the, you know, the tempo and, and um, rhythm of dance music on that fall to the floor. It really works to sort of pump the music in between the kick drums. Daft Punk used it a lot. Eric Prids on Call On Me was an example of it like really being overused, but uh, it kind of sounded cool at the time. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. By the way, a lot of the times these days, people will actually use a compressor to do that. You could use other tools, LFO sort of tools where you can just basically draw in the automation jump, or you could draw it in by hand using volume automation. And I think it's just because it, you can kind of get sample accurate with, with those tools and, and create some interesting rhythms. Logic doesn't come with anything like that as a stock plugin. So I want to show you the sort of the rigid way of of setting it up, it's still not perfectly valid and, and useful in lots of scenarios. So let's have a look then. So I'm going to put a compressor onto, let's start with the chords, new compressor, stick with this digital one, so it should be a little bit cleaner, hopefully. And then where we've got side chain input, Instead of internal, which is what you would normally have it set on, and we that's how we had it set up in the previous example, we go to audio and choose the track that you want to trigger the compressor. So by adding the side chain in, you're telling the compressor that every time the kick drum hits, you want to reduce the volume of the chords in this case. So let's have a look. So if we click listen on the side chain, we can hear that it's the kick drum. And you can see the you can see the gain reduction moving in time with the kick drum. So if we sort of set the attack and release time up, you can really get in depth with this to try and get the perfect sort of rhythm there. But let's have a look. So you can hear that pumping effect if I play it with the kick drum. You can go more. I don't want to overdo it, but if we have a look at this graph, it'll sort of show what's happening as well. You can see it. So you kind of want it pumping at the same time as that offbeat hi-hat. So that's a good little representation of what's happening there. You can see every time the kick drum hits, it ducks and then in between it, the volume's coming back up. And essentially that's the whole premise of side chaining. What we can do though is you notice when the kick drum isn't playing, it'll suddenly get quite loud then. So if you want a little bit more control, 
over that. What we can do is set up a sidechain trigger um, that's doing nothing else. You won't even hear it, but it's doing nothing else but triggering the compressor. And I'll, there's a couple of advantages to doing that, and I'll show you why. So if we duplicate the track, duplicate the kick there, And then I'll rename this SC for sidechain and then kick. And then I'm going to put an EQ on that channel. So it's just all we're hearing is the, the click. So I'll turn that off. So solo that. There's a tiny little click, and it's just the advantage of that is it's a very high frequency little click. There's none of the bass of the kick drum, and it's just going to trigger the compressor, and it allows us to sort of get the release time right because the kick drum's quite long. Uh, it's a bit more difficult to get the release time correct. But I'm going to turn down the side chain kick so we're not hearing that at all, and then simply change the side chain in the compressor to be this side chain kick here. So now if we solo that, that's the chip. It's a little bit of a quicker So yeah, we're not really we're not listening to that side chain kick channel at all. It's um, it's just a trigger for this, but it does. It, there's less of a jump in volume then when um, when the kick stops, and you could have it running the whole way through the track. Really, there'd be nothing stopping you from doing that. But I'll show you what I mean. So even when the kick drum's not playing, it would still be side chained. which you may or may not want, but you, you've got that option if you have a separate sidechain kick channel. And so I'll just undo that. So it was basically, even though the kick drum had dropped out, the sidechain was still happening there. Versus in that scenario, it's now switched off. But because we sort of rolled off some of the bottom end with the EQ, there's less of a volume jump when the sidechain trigger stops as well. So it's one advantage of doing it that way. I will mention though, you can sort of mess around with the attack and release time a bit more because you can make the track feel like it's pushing and, and pulling. And it can be quite tricky. And that's, I think that's why people like those LFO tools where you can sort of just draw in the volume. But let's, have, let's try it on bass. If we can copy over the same compressor to the bass channel and listen to the kick and the bass together. So it's a cool way, we sort of already had a little bit of that side chain in effect because we sort of played with the velocities in the um, level one videos. Um, but this is sort of increasing that and that every time the kick drum hits now the, the bass is you know being reduced by minus sort of 14 decibels or something something there it's a good idea also you could either send everything that you want side chain to a group so they've all got the same timing because if you have you know four different compressors with slightly different timings it can make the timing of your track feel a, a bit weird so either copy over the same compressor or you know send everything to a group and just have one compressor on that
So that sounds cool. So I think in the next video, we'll have a look at maybe some other elements that we can add into it and some tweaks that we can make.